my kitchen sink is clean. I don't even feel like I'm in my own kitchen. Uh, nice to meet you, my name is Kimberly Whisk and today we're going to be putting together some really great freezer meals, dump and go if you will, but they're not your mama's average dump and go freezer meals. I've seen a lot in the past and I try to always find different amazing recipes for you and that's what I've done today. I have 10 for you. Uh, I don't know where I put the recipes. There she is, where did I put the recipe? <laughs> Hot off the press here. So I ran to Costco this morning, grabbed what I needed, and I'm pretty sure I have everything for 10 amazing, wonderful, delicious, family friendly, your kids are gonna love it, incredible weeknight meals. That's my little jingle for you. I have a lot, well 10 is a lot, right? I also planned on doing a lot of like meal prep for the week, but I might have to split it into two videos because I might be a little bit overzealous. So we're gonna stick to the freezer meals today. Freezer meals are just so great to have on hand. We're all busy, we all need a little break, so give yourself a break and put something together now, then you'll thank yourself for it later. Am I right or wrong? I always love having something I can grab. So we're gonna start off with some citrus chicken, cherry pork loin, spiced butternut squash soup. I was gonna say this is in no particular order, but my goodness, this sounds like a very good order to me. Paleo chicken, banana pepper shredded beef, red pepper chicken, pork carnitas, garlic mint pork loin, spicy beef curry stew, and Cool Ranch shredded chicken tacos. Oh, have we got a day planned. Really, it should only take uh, an hour or so to throw these things together. So those are some great meals, all really great ingredients in here. I can't wait to share them with you. The first meal we're gonna put together is called citrus chicken, and this is basically the meal that uh, got me to click on the Pinterest article, that brought me to the website, that brought me to the 30 meals that I had to choose from, and I thought, these are so great, but I pared it down my top 10 for you. Citrus chicken. And now I'm wondering if I bought chicken. Oh no, I think, I'm pretty sure I bought chicken, but I don't remember putting it away. <laughs> I thought I had my life together. Uh, so I have my Costco receipt, Chicken is nowhere on this, so there's that. I do have some chicken in the freezer, but it's frozen, you know? Oh my gosh, I have one, two, better than nothing. All right, here, how many How many chicken meals do we have here? Four long, hot and chili, shredded beef, red pepper chicken, pork carnitas. Perfect, all we need is two. See how that happens? It always works out, just as it should. It's no big deal. Okay, so we have our chicken and we need an orange. And uh, when I saw the picture, I thought, oh, that is the recipe I want to make. Look at all those orange slices. So for some reason, the recipe calls for one orange, but I thought I needed a whole heap done. <laughs> so I bought a million oranges. You really only need one. I just got ahead of myself. We'll do two for fun. You're also going to need some more citrus since it's called citrus chicken, a lemon, a lime, some garlic, uh, basil, don't have that, but I feel like more is more. We're just gonna use some Italian seasoning, oil, salt and pepper, obviously chicken, and then thyme, fresh from my garden. Some of you were like, Kim, that's not from your garden. It's like, do you think I would lie to you? Here, here, now do you believe me fresh from my garden? Don't skimp on the fresh herbs and fresh citrus, okay? That's what elevates a dish. Let's throw it all together. So last time I put together a bunch of freezer meals with you guys, it was so great for me. I think it was more of a barbecue style, or maybe I did like five ingredient. It was something, I'll link that video below. But every single one of those freezer meals was fantastic, and I love having them uh, ready to go to eat. Because some days, I'm not gonna lie, it's like 5 p.m. and I'm thinking, What's for dinner? I have no idea. Okay, so I grabbed what I needed, some freezer lock, Ziploc bags, whatever they're called. You can use reusable ones, which I do have some, but I think they're all being used right now. I might have like one. And then I just use something to collect it all in. You can get a bowl or you can spend your money on like those clippy bag things, but it's unnecessary. Get a tall cup or a small bowl or something. I'm using this measuring cup. And what do I do now? Oh, label your freezer bag. Mucho en 
want to handle. My Spanish is so good. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Labeling is important because you might think you know what you're putting away. You might think, I'll know exactly what that is. And you very might as well, or not, you know? So why not do it just in case? Take the extra five seconds. Since my chicken is completely frozen, it's totally fine for me to add stuff to it and then throw it back in the freezer. And I'll add, it's also totally fine if you change the status of the chicken. I don't know what it's actually called. So like say you have chicken and you change the state of it, it was frozen, now it's cooked, totally fine to throw that in the freezer as well. What there's a problem with is if you get frozen chicken, thaw it out, do nothing with it, and then throw it back in the freezer, pretty sure there's a problem with that. I don't know, salmonella, I dare you, you know what I mean? All I'm saying is like, live your life. I'm gonna wash the citrus because we will be throwing all of this inside the bag. So with each of the citrus fruits, we're just going to half them Slice one half and then juice the other. I'm telling you something, there's something so magical about fresh citrus, it's so good. Okay, after seeing as many slices as it makes, I'm definitely going to slice up a whole orange. You have to let me know, what is your go-to freezer meal? Or crock pot meal, because most of, you can make all of these in the crock pot or, you know, in the oven. I'll tell you, one of my go-tos is a longtime favorite. It includes a lot of like packaged seasoning mixes, which also include dairy and wheat. So I'm trying to stay away from those right now. It is Italian dressing mix, the seasoning packet, and then one packet of ranch. Oh my gosh, I can't even cut this in half. And then one packet of like gravy seasoning, whatever that's called. Oh wow, I can't cut through this. Come on, oh my gosh, now that this lime juice is getting everywhere, this is ridiculous. Just give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Oh, speaking of give it to me, baby, have you guys seen the new, oh, now I'm just completely demolishing it. I'm so sorry, this is horrible. Have you seen the new She's All That? Ooh, I got a burn on my finger. Did I say She's All That? I meant He's All That. Did you even know they were coming out with one? I haven't seen it yet, but She's All That? was one of my all-time favorite movies of all time in high school. All right, half of that, everything's cut, looking schnazzy. And that's why they call it citrus chicken. I'm over here struggling with this garlic and I forgot the hack that I've shared with you guys a couple of times, but you just cut the root off. The root off, sounds like I said root off, which reminds me of Christmas. It's almost that time of year. Anyway, uh, it, the garlic cloves just fall out of it. It's Amazing. You need four cloves, uh, but have you guys seen that tool on Amazon where you like roll it and it like rolls the skin off? And I thought I could just do it with my hands. Ooh, did I just do it with my dang hands? Who needs Amazon, man? And now my hands are gonna smell like garlic for the rest of my life. Let's see if I can do it again. Will lightning strike twice? Hey, look at that. <laughs> I don't know, my hands are getting pretty red. Maybe I should just buy the tool. <laughs> I'll never give up. This is a pretty good trick though, I'll tell you what. Good party trick for your friends. Okay, well I think four cloves is my max. I've hit my breaking point here. Final verdict, I would suggest uh, buying the tool. <laughs> I do however have this sweet doohickey where you just pop a clove in there and smush it to smithereens. And I use this thing almost every day because I cook with garlic almost every day because I love garlic and I'm Italian, leave me alone. And just like that, you have minced garlic. Oh my gosh, speaking of just like that, at this point I'm gonna start adding stuff to the bag, but have you guys seen the promos or the pictures at least for just like that? You know, the reboot movie with Sarah Jessica Parker and all that good stuff? All right, here's my favorite part, adding the fresh juice. Oh, does life get much better than this? <laughs> I'm easily amused, I know. And also this orange is like, I don't know, not as juicy as I was expecting it to be. Kind of very pulpy, right? If this was a juice, it would be labeled extra pulp. Ugh. Now for the lime. The limes are always pretty juicy. Ooh, do you see it fall down my arm? It's like it knows exactly what I want. Pour some lime juice on me. And then I'm gonna add the rest of the 
uh, I don't know, sliced stuff in here. And really, I should have sliced up a couple of limes because, oh wait, I'm not even done. That seems like the star of the show. I also need to get some thyme leaves. And the way that you peel thyme leaves is you just, oh gosh, well, don't listen to me. I don't know anything. You grab a little sprig and you uno reverse it and then just peel the uh, thyme leaves right off of there. The stems taste woody. That's why you wanna take the leaves off. It's a little time consuming, but I promise it's so worth it to have fresh herbs. I've yet to meet one person that says, ooh, this dish has too many fresh herbs. Ooh, did you see that magic? Wow. Well, this is very time consuming. <laughs> it is taking me forever, so I think I'm gonna end on this note. I think I have plenty right here to throw into the dish. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. Just a few little kicks. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of parsley and basil. And that's it for the citrus chicken. So you can keep this frozen for up to three months. And when you're ready to eat it, you can thaw it overnight in the fridge or in the morning with water and then add the contents to a slow cooker and cook on low for four to six hours. Oh, it even has a serving suggestion. Serve with steamed asparagus and a baked potato. Well, that sounds delightful. One is done. Moving on to the next one. I saw the title of this and I just thought, yeah, I'm making that. It's kind of fall because it has cherries in it. Are cherries a fall fruit? I don't know. It doesn't actually matter because you need frozen cherries for this. It's the cherry pork loin. Seems pretty simple. Oh, whoops, I did not buy sweet potatoes. I do have normal potatoes. Ugh. It's like I didn't even make a grocery list. I probably thought, Kim, you have potatoes, just use what you have. One pound of sweet potatoes. I have the smallest potatoes on planet Earth. Oil, garlic, thyme again, and pepper and an onion. That seems pretty simple. I wonder if the flavor profile is going to change. I mean, it definitely will since I don't have the sweet potatoes. Cherries and sweet potatoes. Hmm. It's an interesting combo. It's like sweet and tart. And then with the garlic, it just kind of hits you upside the head. So let's throw this together. I hope it's gonna be a smash hit. Oh, oh, we also need some pork tenderloin, which I did grab from Costco and they actually have pork tenderloins for a crazy price. Oh, cut into that one. I guess we'll use that. How much was this? 12.61 for 4.87 pounds. So technically you don't even need that much, but $6, and this is a lot. This will be dinner and leftovers for two whole nights because it's over two pounds in here. So I'm just gonna slip those right in. Time keeps on slipping, slipping. Oh man, okay, okay, so there's a little bit of mise en place happening. One onion and a couple. I'm just gonna peel the potatoes and dice them. And then I'm gonna chop the onion. And then roll four more cloves of garlic. We're gonna crack them up. This is how I normally get the skin off. I just smush it to bits. What else do we need for our mise en place? A little bit of thyme. Oh man, this smells divine. Ooh, the thyme smells divine. All right, there it is, our mise en place. Oh crap, I forgot to cut the potatoes. No big deal. Now we just dump it in. I grabbed these cherries from Trader Joe's uh, quite some time ago. You only need eight ounces. You guys know what I say. What the heck am I gonna do with the rest of the eight? I did plan on making a dessert with those, so maybe that's what I'll do with the rest. Garlic goes in, onion goes in, potato goes in, I don't know how. Oh, plenty of space, plenty of space. The thyme goes in. Cause I've had the time of my life and I owe it all to you. Wait, that's it? No juices? Well, I guess the cherry juice. Oh man, I forgot to write on this bag. Also, I'm kind of questioning this flavor profile, but if you could smell this, you'd be like, dang, that's good. I'm gonna make sure it's dry. Cherry pork. So when you're ready to cook it, you thaw it overnight in the fridge or in water in the morning, 
add contents of freezer bag to crock pot, cook on low for four to six hours. And you can go ahead and serve this with some green beans, which is my favorite vegetable. All right, moving on. I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit. Okay, up next is spiced butternut squash soup. Does this need time? It doesn't. Great, because I love it. Dirty dancing. Onion. Obviously, you need butternut squash for butternut squash soup. Oh, it says you need a 4.25 ounce can of green chilies. Well, you know what I did? I got four cans of diced green chilies. <laughs> Only need one. All right, here's everything that you're going to need. Butternut squash, onion, some coconut milk, green chilies, cumin, curry powder, garlic, some salt and pepper back there, and I think that's it. Easy enough. Okay, we're gonna get our stuff ready to uh, pop in here. Ooh, I'm pretty sure I could just use this and it would be enough. We need six cups, so I'm just going to scoop the seeds out. Oh my gosh, I'm scooping the seeds out of this thing over the garbage can. And I was like, man, this thing smells so good. Why does it smell so good? I'm smelling the citrus from the garbage can. Oh, how funny is that? Well, I was gonna peel this with a peeler, but that's just way too much work. What's the best course of action here? Just like so? Ooh, it does smell good. You know, butternut squash is such a staple fall food. I definitely don't cook with it enough. Yeah, that smells great. It's like a sweet pumpkin. I'm gonna cut these into pretty small cubes. Well, I will likely need a whole squash for this because this thing is only four cups and you need six. And I already see that I don't have enough here. Well, look at that, six cups exactly. Some more garlic goes in here, three cloves. They go right in. I'm gonna dice up an onion. You only need about one cup of onion, which is probably equal to one small onion, but I have this massive GMO onion, so I'm just gonna use half of it, and this is probably still more than one cup. So here comes the spicy part of this butternut squash soup are the green chilies, the diced green chilies. You just add one can in here. And these are so flavorful. I enjoy having a can on hand all the time when I make tacos or burritos or I don't know, burrito bowls, anything. Breakfast burritos, oh my gosh, it's just so nice to have a little kick to it if you're into that kind of thing. And we're also going to add one can of coconut milk. We're gonna try not to overflow. One can is two cups. And then a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Half a teaspoon of cumin for a little dip. And one tablespoon of curry powder. Oh, I love curry powder. Such a rich flavor. I've never had butternut squash soup before. I'm really excited about this one. Mm. And that's it. Oh my gosh. The flavors, ooh! Oh, I could eat this right now. Just with a spoon, raw, I don't even care. It smells so good. I might make a double batch of this since I have all of this left over. Or I might have to add that to here because we are six people to feed. Oh, I don't know what I should do. Because really I was probably one cup shy of six. Oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. This is going to be great. Okay, try to get all of the air out of it. When you're ready to eat this, you thaw it overnight in the fridge or in the morning in water, and then you cook on low for four hours, and then you puree it with an immersion blender or regular countertop blender. Oh, 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 oh I can't wait for this one. Oh, yeah. Give it to me, baby. Woo! 
That was my knife. I still have all my toes. All right, moving on. It might just be smart of me to save the cleanup till the very end. I don't know. I feel like if you clean as you go, you won't lose your mind at the end with the amount of mess. Take that for what you will. Oh man, I can still smell that curry powder. That is one of my favorite flavors. Up next we have the paleo chili and I'm gonna modify this a little bit. I will add beans so I won't be making it paleo, but I will be making it delicious. What, didn't they have beans in the Stone Age? The directions call for two pounds of beef. I have about one and a half pounds of ground turkey um, it doesn't specify whether or not it should be cooked, but I feel like it should be cooked because when I make chili in my crock pot, I always cook the meat and then add everything else. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to cook it and then add everything else, <laughs> which includes uh, green bell peppers, onion, tomatoes. These are diced tomatoes. Uh, the recipe calls for two 28 ounce cans, uh, but you guys know how I make my grocery list. I didn't get to. Uh, so I'm going to throw in some salsa, the best salsa you'll ever eat in your entire life. And then some beans. This is what I'm adding. Just red beans, black beans, great northern beans, and then taco seasoning if you have it, or you can make your own with some chili powder, cumin, Italian seasoning, paprika, Oh, am I even showing you? I'm so good at YouTube. Oh, throw some garlic in there too. Maybe some onion powder if you like that. Whatever you like, so let's throw it together. Actually, the meat is still cooking. What are we gonna do while we're waiting? you're waiting for your meat to cook? I'm gonna leave it up there. Man, have you listened to that song as an adult? Oh my gosh, it is so raunchy. Also rude. Like, stop begging, Rick James. I said no. <laughs> no means no, <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh, you know what I could have been doing? Something productive like cutting up my veggies. Well, you guys have seen me cut up an onion about 17 times just today alone. But that's what I'm gonna do, cut up an onion. And then cut up my bell pepper, just dice it up here. And oh my gosh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, did you see the meme that talks about putting googly eyes on bell peppers? I would have done it for you, but one, I don't have googly eyes, and two, I have already gutted these and rinsed them, but it is so funny and weird. Okay, cool, cool. Let's get to the fun part, assembling. I come home last night. The ground turkey goes in. If you have better skill than me, you can make it all in the bag. That's great. And then your veggies, bell peppers, and onions, and oh my gosh, did I tell you what the recipe actually calls for? Carrots and celery. If you wanna put that in your chili, you go right ahead. I just wanna love ya. One can of diced tomatoes. And you might be thinking, Kim, this is just so simple. You could do this the day of, takes less than 30 minutes. You just dump everything into a pot and cook it that way. Uh, sure, you could do that, but what if you don't have all the ingredients, huh? What then? What if you don't have 30 minutes? What if you don't have meat thawed out? All of the what ifs. This is chili powder, and I'm going to add a lot of it. I don't know what the recipe calls for, but my recipe calls for a crap ton, and that is a metric measurement. Some salt, some pepper, some Italian seasoning, because why not? I don't know how much, just enough. Some cumin, it's good for your soul, good for your body. Oh my gosh, well I just found out, uh, cumin is good for an increase in antioxidant intake. It provides iron, it promotes digestion, it reduces foodborne illnesses, something about weight loss, and something about better cholesterol. You guys, hop on the cumin train. I had to listen to Google about 17 times to write that all down. A little bit of garlic there, a little bit of paprika, that's the red stuff I was putting in. And that's all she wrote. Oh man, oh I did write on this bag. And that's a pretty looking bag if you ask me. All right, so this one, you uh, you know, thaw overnight and then cook on low for four to six hours and all that good stuff. You serve it with some cilantro on top and avocado and you've got yourself a fine good meal. Oh my gosh, it's a conspiracy. I completely forgot to add the beans to this. One can of red beans with the juices. 
And then I drained a can of black and a can of white beans. Cause it doesn't matter if you're black or white. Oh my gosh, now that is a hefty dinner for two. All right, there we go. Wow, that's a big one. I don't know about you, but I need some water. I need to hydrate. It purifies the soul. Okay, this one I'm excited about. Banana pepper shredded beef. So I need some beef. Also need some banana peppers. Have you ever bought these? Not from a can? I didn't even know they sold them like this. I'm, I hope I got the right thing. They look like the right thing, banana peppers. Ooh, yeah, just smelling them makes my salivary glands go crazy. Four of those. Oh my gosh, a yellow onion. You guys, I should have cut all the onions before I even began. I feel like every recipe needs an onion. Aw, what the heck? I feel like I didn't grab a good bag of onions. Okay, onions, beef broth. It says you add this on like day of cooking, but I'm not gonna remember to have beef broth. It's not something I keep on hand. Wait, does it? Don't even listen to me, what am I gonna say? Okay, so what excited me about this recipe is that it kind of reminded me of Mississippi roast. But if you know, Mississippi roast calls for, I don't know, like a gravy pack, some kind of seasoning that most likely has dairy or wheat in it. Also calls for a whole stick of butter, that's what makes it so dang delicious. And I could use dairy-free butter, but I don't know, I'm gonna try this one out. You could also do this with chicken. All right, so for the 115th time, I'm gonna cut up an onion. And I'm gonna cut into these bell peppers. Just slice them. Oh my gosh, have you ever had a fresh, did I just say bell pepper? I meant banana pepper. Ooh, have you ever seen a banana spider? I have. They're definitely not cool. It's much more, ooh, yeah. Now I smell it, ooh, that's nice. I'm sure you could still use the ones that are like soaked in vinegar. Ooh, I mean, there's something really special about those, right? Have I ever told you the story about a sleepover with a couple of my friends and we used to like sneak out into the kitchen and get the jar of banana peppers and just eat it? One time we did it, it was three of us. One of our friends was so sleeping she just she's like I can't even believe you did that without me while I was sleeping because we ate the entire jar without her we were weird it's totally fine some people grow out of it I haven't I feel like four is a little abundant don't you Four. well we've gone this far oh was I supposed to seed it oh well I didn't do that Okay, for this, you need two pounds of, what kind of meat is this? I don't know, it's so weird. I'm like waving meat in front of your face. Beef chuck shoulder roast. All right, right in there, chuck. Is the bowl even helping me at this point? I feel like it's a, more of a hindrance than anything else. Oh gosh, I'm touching the banana peppers with my bare hands. Okay, just scoop the onion in and scoop the banana peppers in. And then one cup of beef broth. That's good enough. Ooh, this is gonna be really delicious. Of course, thaw this overnight in the fridge or in the morning with water, and then you add the contents to a slow cooker, cook on low for eight hours, and then you shred the meat and stir with sauce and slow cooker, and then you serve it with some roasted carrots and potatoes. Moving on. Okay, another good one, red pepper chicken, and I went ahead and cut everything up which I should have done at the top of this video, just cut everything that I needed, because I feel like that would have saved a lot of time. So tip for you, red pepper chicken. And it's not spicy that I know of. It's just the sweet red peppers. Just kidding, you need red pepper flakes. It's the double red pepper. Here's what you need. I don't even have it all out. Red pepper flakes, where are you? There you are, so simple. Okay, super simple. Onion, garlic, two red bell peppers, some red pepper flakes, oil, and salt and pepper. Oh wait, main ingredient? The main attraction is the chicken. I'm using thighs because that's all I have and also I love thighs so much. It's so hard to overcook them. They're always juicy, always delicious, always cheaper. So I'm gonna take the chicken thighs and just dump them right into this bag. Fits like a glove. Pretty simple from here. Throw in the red peppers, throw in the onion, throw in the garlic. I mean, this is why they're called throw and go recipes. Dump and go, little bit of salt, 
Little bit of pepper. A little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. It only calls for one teaspoon. You know how I measure a teaspoon though, you know? And the kicker, a quarter cup of olive oil. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, a quarter cup of this. Just to get things moving and grooving. That looks real good. Doesn't that look good? That looks good. All right, so what do we serve this on top of? To cook and thaw, everything's the same. Slice it up, shred it, and then return it to the crock pot, and then serve with roasted broccoli and potatoes. Ooh, great suggestions. Next up, we're gonna throw together some pork carnitas. You need a Boston butt. If you live in Boston, this might be something else. Uh, you can call it a pork shoulder, whatever it is. It looks delicious. I can't wait to make this. I actually made pulled pork the other day and it was a huge hit. My family loves it. Not this recipe, but you know, you gotta try new things. Orange, bell peppers, onion, garlic. You need paprika and cumin. And then I'm going to add in some of this liquid smoke because I feel like it just gives it that depth of flavor. Salt and pepper. And that's all she wrote. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my miso sauce. Wow, look at that. So now we're just gonna throw everything together. Pretty simple. No skill involved at all. I also feel like how the heck is this gonna fit in a gallon Ziploc bag? But we're gonna do it over here. Pork carnita. Who doesn't love a good pork carnita? With some good old barbecue sauce. Some gluten-free cornbread, baked beans on the side. That is a hunk, a chunk of meat right there. Okay, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, one teaspoon of smoked paprika. Ooh, one and a half teaspoons of cumin. Uh, wonder if I have more. I do. Look at that. My life is so organized. Not really, but that's okay. All right, a little bit more in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of liquid smoke. Just a couple of squirts. And then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. The garlic, the onion, the bell pepper. All of it goes in there. And the kicker is you need the juice of one orange. Just gives it a little bit of freshness. That's it for this one. Oh, what do we do with it? Oh my gosh, serve over salad or with scrambled eggs? Are you people crazy? Eating pork carnitas with scrambled eggs? Scrambled eggs? Oh my gosh. Oh, you're also supposed to put in a bay leaf. I don't have one of those. If you do, throw it in, I don't care. Ooh, that's good. Scrambled eggs? I mean, I guess I shouldn't knock it till I try it, right? I'll let you know how it tastes. Ooh, okay, the next one I've been really excited about. Ellen, are you scared me? It is garlic mint pork loin. So you need some mint. I have some fresh from my garden. You also need some garlic because that's the name of the dish, garlic mint and pork loin. I wonder what else we need. Salt and pepper, apple cider vinegar, onion, and a couple of limes and oil. Good to go, let's get it start. Let's get it started. Eh. Let's get it started. Eh. I sound just like him. I don't care what you say. Black Eyed Peas, who? Oh, wow. You know what? These recipes are next level. They are all gourmet. Most of them have citrus or herbs or some kind of next level deliciousness. So that's what I'm all about. Meat into the bag. All right, I'm gonna get my miso plus going. Just cut everything up. Another onion, man. Can you, can you believe it? Look at those knife skills. That's how they taught me at Cordon Bleu. So I'm over here collecting the mint leaves and I'm wondering, uh, oh boy, it calls for five mint sprigs. And at first I thought it meant like five mint leaves, but then I figured, well, they wouldn't name a recipe mint garlic and just have five little measly mint leaves here. I'm actually really excited about this one. I feel like the mint is gonna give it such a refreshing flavor. I've never had mint pork loin. The mint, the garlic, the limes. Oh, and the onion. Can't forget the onion, man. I'm just gonna roll up the herbs and then give it a nice little chippity chop. A julienne, if you will. Now you know what to do. Ooh, okay, one tablespoon of olive oil in here. A couple pumps. A quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. 
Ooh, this could ruin a dish for me. This is my nemesis. I That was not a quarter cup. I don't want to add a quarter cup, that's why. This stuff is, uh, this is something else, okay? Some people can't stand cilantro. I cannot stand apple cider vinegar. I don't know what it is. It makes me want to die. Although it is a cure-all. If you have something wrong with you, take a shot of apple cider vinegar. I'm just throwing everything in. Onion, garlic, lime. Ooh, lime. I forgot. You need a quarter, no, yeah. Quarter cup of lime juice in here. Ooh. I'll tell you what, there's just something special about lime juice. I'm like salivating it as I'm squeezing these. I love, I mean, it's so refreshing, it's so unique. I wanna bathe in it, that's what I wanna do. I want a candle that smells like just pure lime. And then to make sure this looks pretty for no good reason, I'm just gonna shove some limes there at the bottom. You're supposed to have a, a quarter cup of lime juice, which is probably two limes, but I decided just to cut mine up. Oh my gosh, doesn't it look so happy? That's it, okay, what's the recommendation for this? Okay, slow cooker, uh, low for eight hours, serve with watermelon and cucumber salad. <laughs> yes, please. Three cups of watermelon, one cup cubed cucumber, one tablespoon fresh mint leaves, one tablespoon chopped scallion, and one tablespoon lime juice. That sounds like a delicious evening to me. A boon appetit. Okay, the next one is a spicy beef curry stew. Um, yes please. Can't wait for this one. Beef? Yeah, sure. Curry? Yes please. Sign me up for that. Oh my god. Oh, we need carrots? Oh, two sweet potatoes. Oh, another onion. <laughs> Diced tomatoes? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't have that. Alright, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Mine. What do we do? Yeah, yeah. What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, yeah. Well, here's what we do. I don't even really like tomatoes with my curry, so I'm gonna see if I have a red bell pepper out there. A BRB. Here's everything that you're going to need. Uh, modified beef broth. Instead of tomatoes, I'm doing a red bell pepper, onion, carrots. You work with what you have. If you don't like something, replace it with something else. If you don't like onions. Oh, shoo, I feel bad for you right now. Every recipe has had an onion. Good for us, we love onions. I think they, it gives it so much flavor. Garlic, we need some ginger, fresh if you have it, red pepper flakes, and then potatoes. Are these not the dirtiest potatoes you've ever seen in your, your life? Okay, so I'm gonna work on peeling this and all that good stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm done cutting. I got blisters on my fingers. All right, now we plop it in a bag. Spicy beef curry stew. Spicy beef curry stew. Stew reminds me of Mrs. Doubtfire. Pierce Brosnan on Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Okay. Ooh, I'm not done. I have to cut the beef. Okay. Finally, <laughs> I feel like it took forever to cut that meat. I have it cut up into little cubes. I'm just going to add the onion. Oh, I wanted to take a picture of that. It's too late, we've gone too far. Potatoes, carrots, red bell pepper, they all join the party. Oh, the garlic goes in. What else do we have? Beef broth, two cups of beef broth, a one and a two. A little more. A little bit of ginger goes in. You know, a little bit goes a long way. I probably put way too much. A little bit of red pepper flake. A little bit of red pepper flake goes in. Oh no. And then of course, we need some curry powder. 
Doesn't that look beautiful? I'm going to add some curry powder to this. I don't know, a tablespoon or two. All right, my favorite part. Thaw it overnight, cook it low, six to eight hours, all that good stuff, and serve it with uh, potatoes. That was kind of anticlimactic. All right, looks nice and promising. All right, well, we might have saved the best for last because I don't have to cut up an onion. It is called, I forgot, I didn't, where did I write it down at? It's like Cool Ranch Chicken. Cool, 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 except for I am fresh out of ch chicken. I don't know, I even wrote on my grocery list and I remember checking it off, but I didn't put it in my cart. It's fine, we're fine. Okay, oil, red wine vinegar, taco seasoning, homemade if that's your thing, but at this point I'm kind of over it. So I bought this uh, taco seasoning mix. I haven't used it yet. Ooh, it smells promising. Nice, deep, smoky flavor. And then you need some ranch seasoning, which you can also make on your own. It's kind of weird smelling. Okay, so let's pretend there's chicken in this bag. You need two tablespoons of oil. Two tablespoons, that's great. Oh, sorry, three tablespoons. Two tablespoons of woo, red wine vinegar. There used to be a little cap on here with little holes and it wouldn't come out unless you dumped it. All right, well, a little bit more actually, a little bit more. Ooh, I like red wine vinegar, that's nice. I actually love red wine vinegar on salads and stuff. Okay, how much of this? Probably three tablespoons of the ranch seasoning. That equals to about one packet. Oh boy, it's getting a little dried up here. Gotta go all Jason on it. All right, just a little bit, three tablespoons or so, a couple of chunks, maybe a little more. It is called Cool Ranch. And then some taco seasoning, who knows how much, just, you know, however much you wanna add. Just go until you don't feel like it anymore. Just, you know, taco seasoning, put it all in there. You know why I might have crossed off chicken? Because I technically bought chicken, the shredded chicken kind. It's like pre-cooked, good to go, because I was going to make the meal prep video, I was gonna make like, uh, I don't know what they're called, toast, not tostinos, toast something. Taquitos? All right, and that's it. And then you just smoosh it all together. Crock pot, thaw it out before you throw it in the crock pot on low, six to eight hours. That seems a little lofty for some chicken, maybe four hours. And here's the kicker, you serve it on some shredded lettuce. Don't we love that? I might make this tonight with some meat that I already have cooked up. And that looks good. Wow, can you even believe it? Did you make it to the end? Are you still here? Let me know what recipe you're most excited to try. I'm not sure if I could pick a favorite. Oh my gosh, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I hope you got some good dinner inspiration for your freezer. So you're not running around every night wondering what the heck is for dinner. You have 10 meals that you can now throw in your freezer. 10 very good, delicious recipes. I have high hopes, they smell really good. That's all I can say at this point. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, I will likely share how they come out as I cook them. But thanks so much for watching and hanging out. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.